<clears throat> we looked at yesterday uh, the divine nature of Christ. We looked at explicit statement of his deity that Jesus is God. So we looked at uh, John chapter 1, verse 1, the word, right? The word was um, a concept in the Old Testament. Uh, for God, many times, mm, the word is used to represent God. The word leads people. The word uh, convicts people. So that's the reason John brought um, this idea of word to Jesus Christ. It's a, uh, remember yesterday we saw, uh, not yesterday, last week we saw, instead of he uses an Old Testament metaphor for the sovereign agency activity. And words, so the words of God describe the second person of the Trinity. That's what we looked at yesterday. And we looked, no, yesterday, sorry, last week, we looked at all those verses. Today we are looking at uh, divine names given to Christ. We are going to look at the names that are given to Christ. First one, Son of God. What does that mean? Son of God means what? Matthew chapter 15, verse 15 to uh, 17. You will read, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Maybe 16. Um, Peter says, you are the son of the living God. Luke, we read, the holy offspring shall be called the son of God. So what should we understand about the word son of God? Because in contemporary English, we use the term son to refer to male physical offspring. Remember, the phrase son of God can be confusing. Right in English, we you always use the word son as a male physical offspring. In Greek and especially Hebrew, the idiom mean the idiom son of means partaking the qualities and characteristics of what is a son means. Partaking of the qualities and characteristics of someone or something. For example, for example, this is what we read. Jo Noah. Noah was a son of 500 years in Genesis 5 verse 32. What is that? Son of 500 years. According to English interpretation, <clears throat> we should say, okay, 500 years had a son. And his name is Noah. <laughs> Not sure we have to the No, he was characterized by being 500 years old. That is what it simply means. Then, in for example, Jonah. Jonah in chapter 4, verse 10. Jonah has got a God. Right? A God. And that is known as the son of a knight. <laughs> God is a son of night. It was characterized by growing into maturity in a single night. That's the reason it is said it is a son of night. Okay. Another one. Judas. Judas was a son of perdition. Perdition had a son, huh? No. We understand it means. And here is Barnabas. Was a son of engagement. Son of engagement. I'm saying there are many, many examples in the Bible where we use the word son of. So the word son of actually means what? Man. Huh? Man. No, no. That's not the son of means. So son of actually means this. 
partaking of the qualities and characteristics of that is what the meaning it's not literally some of me a physical meal offering no that's not the way we have to understand because in a hebrew usage of the word summer actually means partaking the qualities and characteristics of so that means when bible says son of god means what should we understand jesus is someone who partakes the qualities and characteristics of god that's what it means it is not simply father had a son like uh, probably jehovah witness would say father had a son father begets the son and that son is you know so that, that means son is a creature no that's not the way bible says son of simply means partake in the qualities and characteristics because you have all these verses right all these verses says it's not literal son but it is someone and something that part that partakes the character qualities of another one or another thing now let's look at the word son of man so son of god means jesus is son of god means jesus partakes character and qualities of god then what is son of man all right you know the word son of man is very general actually it refers both to christ the messiah yeah daniel is so specific right so specific that he uses for the messiah the word son of man which is heartbreaking for for some interpretation <clears throat> son of man and of course matthew you have 27 times the word son of man is used in matthew 11 times in mark 25 times in luke and 12 times in john what son of man all right and of course revelation you read son of man in chapter 1 chapter 14 now so the phrase son of man phrase son of man refers both to christ and to other human beings right for example job you see but famously remember ezekiel or oh, son of man remember that one right so what son of man denotes son of man denotes humanity having having human substance see if son of man denotes humanity then son of god should denote what should denote what should denote divinity right yeah absolutely so i am saying here mm, we need to understand the word son of by calling christ the son of god then bible identifies christ as what having the qualities and characteristics of god so when maybe you know muslim islam would come up and argue again okay he's a son of god how can god have a son right every time you hear that argument right every time how can god have a son god is not a human being to have a son yeah jesus is a prophet he is not son of god he is not god that's what they would say but according to the hebrew yes that's what exactly it means son of god means he is god he is essentially and substantially god now how do we know how do we know from the scripture this is clearly the understanding of jesus day and we i'm going to we are going to look at these two references so let's okay open your bibles let's read from the bible right rather than reading from the norms let's look at john chapter 5 john chapter 5 verse 17 to 18 Can one of you please read? John five. But Jesus answered them, 
my my father has has been walking until now and i have been walking was it therefore the jews shout all the more to kill him because he not only broke the sabbath but also said that god was his father making himself equal with god so you look at that one <laughs> what is the problem okay what was the problem of jewish people Hmm? The problem is Jesus is calling God as his father. That he's basically saying, I am the son of the father. How did Jewish, Jewish people understood that one? Eh? How, did, how did Jewish people understood? How, how did they understand? Eh? They understood as Jesus is making himself what? Equal with God. Yeah. When Jesus claimed that I am sent by the Father, basically they, they know that he is he's saying that he is the son of the Father. Jewish people understood that he is making, he, making himself equal with God. Look at the other verse. John chapter 10, verse 33 to 38. Let's read that. We are not stoning you for any good work, mm. they replied, but for blasphemy, because you, a mere man, claim to be God. <laughs> now, you, you, you know this, see, these uh, Muslim would come, always come and claim. Has Jesus ever claimed to be God? Have you heard that one? Have you heard that one? You know, for what is that uh, Nike uh, of a Muslim preacher? You know, that is on Nike. You know, he... he Dr. He, Zakir Naik, sir. Huh? Dr. Zakir Naik. Yes. Yeah, he, he, he would always ask this question, you know, has Jesus ever claimed to be God? No, Jesus never claimed. But read the Bible. In the moment Jesus said, you know, I am the son. You know, I have a father. Father sent me. Jewish people understood something. And they were saying, you are, you know, being a man, you are making yourself out to be God. Let's read uh, the rest of the thing. Can you read? Jesus answered them, is it not written in your law, I have said, you are gods. If he called them gods to whom the word of God came, and scripture cannot be set aside. What about the one whom the father set apart as his very own and sent into the world? Go ahead, go ahead, read down. No, no, you are muted. So, okay. For the one whom, do you not believe me unless I do the works of my father, but I do them, even though you do not believe me. Believe the works that you may know and understand that the Father is in me and I in the Father. Mm -hmm. Again, they yes. tried to seize him, but he escaped their grip. Yeah, uh, okay. Let's read until 38. No, 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 you're not able to hear it. Somehow you're muted, sorry. Verse 38, chapter 10, verse 38. But if I do them, even though you do not believe me, believe the works that you may know and understand. No, no, just a verse about 37. Do not believe me unless I do the works of my father. Mm -hmm. And? Uh, but if I do them, even though you do not believe me, believe the works that you may know and understand. That the Father is in me and I in the Father. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So here, uh, if you look at uh, in our note, maybe there because uh, the, there's a uh, little uh, difficult. Look at the notes. This is what we, we read. Do you say, do you say of him whom the Father sanctified and sent into the world? You are blaspheming because I said I am the Son of God. So, you know, Jesus 
Jesus is actually Jesus is arguing here, right? Jesus is arguing here, and Jesus' argument uh, is very clear. You are you you are blaspheming because I said I am the Son of God, and if I do not do the works of my Father, do not believe me. But if I do them, though you do not believe me, believe the works, so that you may know and understand that Father is in me, and I am the Father. Which is, now I am saying this is very clear claim that Jesus is simply saying, I am the Son of God. Right? That means, basically that means, I am, I am God. The moment he says, I am Son of God. Right? The moment he says, I am, for example, verse 36 says, what about the one the Father set apart as his very own, sent to the world? When, why then do you accuse me of blasphemy? Bl blasphemy because I said, I am God's son. Yeah, so the accusation was that Jesus claimed that I am God's son, right? That was, so they understood it as Jesus claiming to be God. John chapter 10 verse 19 verse 7, we have a law. By that law, he ought to die because he made himself ought to be what? Son of God. So what do, you, what do you understand? What is the, what was the accusation of Jewish people? Jewish leaders in killing Jesus. It is simply because Jesus claimed to be son of God. That means making himself equal to God. So the idea of son of God is, means one who partakes character qualities of something or someone else. So when Jesus says he's a son of God, Jesus is partaking character qualities of God himself. Simply, it is the claim that Jesus is God. All right. Uh, now the question is, are believers sons of God then? There are verses in the Bible. Are the believers God's sons? Yes, in that we have participated in new birth. All believers are relationally children of God who gave us life and adopted into the family of God. Yes, we are all relationally children of God. As such, we are relationally God's sons and daughters and given the privileges of heirs. However, there will be always a qualitative distinction between Jesus and believers. He is the Son of God. There is no, it is a, in class by himself, a class of which we can never aspire for that. For that reason, Jesus is called the unique Son of God. Remember. Jesus is the unique Son of God. Of course, some of your translation would say, only begotten Son. And I would say, the NIV is the best translation, one and only Son, the unique Son of God. There is a qualitative difference between Jesus as the only Son, and we are sons of God. 